Hey all, Matt Hepworth with Studio New and UAD Forums, and today I'm going to go over how I set up an Apollo typically with Pro Tools, um, some of the ins and outs that are different than normal. First thing that we want to do is we're going to go into our Apollo settings and we're going to configure our I.O. So I'm just going to switch over into console settings. We want our I.O. matrix. Now, everything's going to be a little bit different for what Apollo you have. But what I typically use is I go into custom after I've done just a basic default setting. And then I always customize a few things. I like my mon one and two to be the very first thing so that they correspond with my outputs. That's going to make sure that your hardware inserts line up in Pro Tools. And it also gives me the monitor input that I typically uh, will use for certain things. Like I say, this varies for everybody depending on what their setup is. I like to set the inputs and outputs to PT mode because then you're going to be capped at 32. But I know the newer versions of Pro Tools allow up to 64. So maybe that's not really a thing that anybody needs to be concerned about now. But what I'm going to also make sure that I have is I want to make sure that I have my auxes set as inputs and my virtuals because I'll use those um, during projects. And on the counter side, on outputs, I'm going to make sure that I have my cues and my virtual set on the outputs. Everything else, you just change to none. So now that we've got that set, we need to go back into Pro Tools, go set up I.O., I'm going to go inputs, grab everything, delete them, and hit default. That's going to pull our new settings in there. And then I don't care about these extras, so I'm just going to delete those. That's an optional step. We're going to do the same thing here. Default. And I'm just going to clear out these that I'm not going to use. So now I've got that. And you can export this. I probably would. Uh, but now we've got our setup. So from there, we're going to change a couple other things. We're going to go into options. We're going to make sure that low latency monitoring is enabled. Without that, you're going to get a doubling effect because you're going to have Pro Tools monitoring and you're going to have console monitoring. And then another thing we want to change is we want to go into Preferences and we're going to make sure to allow sends to persist during low latency monitoring. Now, there are a couple of reasons for this. If you're using QMixes, you want to feed from, uh, feed from Pro Tools. That's one reason. The other reason is if you want to trigger a reverb from Pro Tools, which is what I typically do. So that way, even though you can have a reverb in console, that's great. I use my auxes for other things a lot of times. So now I'm just going to add some tracks just to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to do a mono track that's just going to be for my microphone right now for testing. I'm going to do a mono aux input. And I'm going to do a, a stereo master fader. OK, so now with each of these, I'm just going to call this mic. I did uh, command shift enter to go to the next track, by the way. And we're going to call this verb M 2S. That's just mono to stereo. Master can just be called master. Now I'm going to go into my inputs and assign that. And I'm just going to pick, well, I already have one named that, but I'm just going to choose a bus so you can see it. I'm going to rename that bus. Reverb mono to, to stereo. OK, so now I've got that. Now I'm going to do solo safe. That's by command solo, by the way. And that's going to make sure that if we solo our track, we still hear the reverb. Maybe you don't want that, so you can always clear that, or you can always just mute that. Then I'm just going to put a reverb in, and I'm actually going to use one of the UA reverbs. I'm going to do pure plate, and I'm going to turn that 100% wet. Okay, so now I'm going to come into the send, and I'm going to assign my reverb bus. And you can see it right there, reverb mono the stereo, the one we just named. Okay, we're going to record enable that track. So the Pro Tools sees it, and we're going to give it a little bit of reverb. Hello, hello, hello. 
glorious plate reverb. Like I say, we can mute that if we want to. But there it is, all good to go. And the reason I did a mono to stereo for this send is because a lot of times if you're using a reverb or a delay, your mono source will feed it differently than a stereo source because a lot of the plugins are true stereo. So if I do a mono source and feed a mono to stereo delay, for example, I can get some pretty cool offset things. Um, but that's for another video. You can just, you know, for simplification, you can always just do a stereo reverb. But I tend to use a mono, and then I do a mono to stereo plugin, which is exactly what I did here. So that's the basic setups for Apollo. What's cool is it doesn't really matter what we're doing here in Pro Tools. Everything is controlled in Apollo except our reverb send here. Hello. And if I wanted to put that in console, I can. We can always just pull that up. Come right here, copy settings. And if you want to be crazy about it, you can even just hit live track so there's no added latency. Otherwise, you have the buffer latency, which is not a big deal to me. So I copied that setting, then I'm going to go in console. I'm just going to put it in here. and paste that setting in. And there we go, 100% wet. And now we can hear it in console if that's what we prefer. Hello. And we're feeding that from our aux feed right here. But for simplicity, like I say, I'm just gonna do that in Pro Tools instead. And uh, here it is, same sound. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. It helps me do more videos. And uh, I will see you next time.